here are the notes over targets 10 and 11. Target 10 is I can find a value of a composite function using equations, tables, and graphs. So kind of talk about the composite function here. It says the com composition of a function f with a function g, so you're composing f and g, is found by replacing each variable in f with the expression for g. The composition of f with g is written as f of g of x. So that's how we would say this. f of g of x. All right, so what we're going to be doing here is we're going to be utilizing all six of these um, function relations. So we have tables, we have graphs, we have equations, and we're going to be answering these six questions down, oops, just kidding, there's nine, nine questions down below. So we'll start with the first one. It's asking me to do h of zero. So I'm going to find the relation that's h. So if you notice here, we have like, this is f, this graph is g, that's j, h is over here in that table, and then I have the equations k and m. So I basically like, for a, I'm going to look for h, wherever the relation for h is. And h of 0 means I'm going to plug in 0 for x, and I'm going to give them that y value. So my answer here would be negative 1. Now, that's what you're going to do for all of these. For every single one of these questions, a through i, you're going to be plugging in the numbers that you see for the x value, and you're going to write down your y value. So we're plugging in numbers for x and writing down the y value as our answer. All right, so let's look at the next one. m of negative 4. I'm going to find my relation m. It's over here. It's a function. m of negative 4 means I'm going to plug in negative 4 for x in my m equation. So I'm going to take x squared minus 1, but I'm going to replace x with negative 4. So negative 4 squared minus 1. And you can do this in your calculator, or you can do it by hand. Negative 4 squared is 16. 16 minus 1 gives me 15. Okay, let's look at C. I have J of 3. All right, J of 3 means I'm going to plug in 3 for my x value. J is that graph up there. It's that quadratic graph. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find 3 along my x-axis. So find 3 along x-axis. And I'm going to give them the y value that is associated with that. So the x value of 3 is right here. The y value associated with that is 2. My answer is 2. Let's do a few more. Here's where we're getting down to the composition. So A, B, and C were kind of just like warm-up problems, but D through I are the actual composition problems where we're doing K of F of 4, something like that. So we're composing F of 4 with our K. Here's what we're going to do. You're going to for D through I, work your way from the inside out. So work your way from the inside out. Work your way from the inside out. And what I mean by that is like, for example, let's look at D. It's asking me to do K of F of 4. I'm going to start by doing f of 4. So I'm going to find my f relation, which is right here. It's this first table. f of 4 means I'm going to plug in 4 for x and get out a y value. f of 4 is 8. So now I'm doing k of 8, and that will be my final answer. So you're going to work your way from the inside out. Do the inside first, then do the outside function. So I'm doing f of 4 to start. I got 8, now I'm doing k of 8. So now I look for k, k is that um, equation right there, right above it, 1 half x minus 4. So k of 8 would be 1 half times 8 minus 4, so 4 minus 4, which is 0. 
you kind of have to do two different things here for D through I. For E, let's do E. First, I'm going to do G of 4. Okay, so G of 4. Let's look for G. G is that first table. So G of 4. I'm looking for 4 along my X. And the Y value that matches up with that is negative 4. The Y value is negative 4. So negative 4 is what I got for G of 4. Now I'm working my way to the outside. Now I'm doing H of negative 4. H is that table way over there. H of negative 4 is negative 5. So negative 5 is my answer here. Um, let's do F. So J of 1 is what I'm going to do first. And then I'll do M of that answer. J of 1 is... So now I work my way to the outside, and I'm doing M of 6 now, and that will be my final answer. M of 6 is going to have to be done on this equation down here. So I'll do 6 squared minus 1, so 36 minus 1 gives me 35. K of G of 8. I'm first going to do G of 8. G of 8 is negative 2, it looks like. And then I do K of that negative 2. K is that equation right above this. So I have 1 half times negative 2 minus 4. I'm just plugging in negative 2 for x. 1 half times negative 2 is a negative 1 minus 4. I get negative 5. All right, h. I'm first going to do the inside, so f of 3. f of 3 is 6. So now I do m of 6. M of 6. Uh, come over here to the M. M of 6, I actually already did M of 6. Um, it was 36 minus 1, which was 35. Alright. I is J of H of 2. So I'll first do H of 2. H is that table over there. H of 2 is 1. So H of 2 is 1, and then I'm doing J of 1. J of 1. So J is that graph. J of 1 is 6. I already did that one. So J of 1 is 6. 6 is my final answer there. So once again, you're working your way from the inside out and plugging numbers in for X for whatever relation that you're supposed to be looking at. So if it says K of some number, you're going to find the relation of K plug in that number for x. All right, that's target 10. Let's do target 11. I can graph the inverse given a function. So it says the inverse function switches input and output values. It just switches the x's and the y's. The inverse of f can be denoted by f to the negative 1 power, which is read as f inverse. So we call that f inverse. So for these problems on the back, we're going to be graphing the original function then we're just going to be switching the input and output values to graph the inverse function. So what they're going to be doing is they're going to be giving me an original relation. They're going to give me something like f of x equals 2x, or we can say y equals 2x. Normally they would just give me the input, okay? but today on the notes they're actually giving me the output as well. Um, so, for example, on your homework, you'll only be given the input values. To find the output values, you'll just plug all of these x values in for x in your function. So, plug values in for x to get your y's. All right, just for future reference. First, what I'm going to do first is just graph these points. The points would be negative 2, negative 4 negative 1, negative 2, 
zero, zero. So for example, like this is one point, this is another point, and so on and so forth. So my x value would be negative two, my y would be negative four, so there's my first point. My next point is negative one, negative two. Then I have zero, zero, one, two, and then two, four. All right, so I'm just going to connect those dots. And there's that graph. My next step is to switch the x's and the y's. So you're going to take your table that you just used. You're going to write the x's in the y column and the y's in the x column. All you're going to do is switch those. So on the top, I now have negative 4, negative 2, 0, 2, and 4. On the bottom, now I have negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. So I just all I did was switch the x's and the y's, the, the location of them. Now my job is to graph these new points. Now I have brand new points. My points now are negative 4, comma, negative 2, which is right here. Negative 2, negative 1, which is right here. 0, 0, 2, 1, and then 4, 2. So what I did was I graphed the inverse relation. All you had to do was take your original x and y points, flip the x's and the y's, and then graph those new points. That's all I did. Let's try another one. So my original relation is f of x equals x plus 4, or we can say that that's y equals x plus 4. Again, they would not give you the output values, for example, on the homework, but they would give you the input values, or the x's, and you would just plug those values in for x here and get out all of your y values. So I'm going to graph these points they give me first. Negative 4, comma, 0. Negative 2, 2. 0, 4. 2, 6. 4, 8. And then I'll just connect these points. All right, there's my original. Now, to get my inverse relation, I'm just going to switch the x's and the y's again. So my x's now are the y's that I had before. 0, 2, 4, 6, 8. And my y's are now negative 4, negative 2, 0, 2, and 4. And I'll just graph these new points. So 0, comma, negative 4, 2, comma, negative 2, 6, 4, comma, 0, oops, 6, comma, 2, and 8, comma, 4. So here's my new inverse relation, my inverse graph. They look very similar, um, but the inverse of a function, so this very last question, it says the inverse of a function can be graphed by reflecting over the line. This answer is y equals x. All right, so I kind of want to show you what that means. And if you go back up to the very first example here, what that tells us is that my red graph came from, well, me switching the x's and the y's, but graphically, it came from reflecting the blue line over the line y equals x. So the line y equals x looks like this. It starts at 0. You go up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1. And then down here you go down one left one, down one left one, down one left one. It just has a slope of 1 and a b value of 0. If I took that blue line and I reflected it over that purple line, I would get the red line. So that's all this is telling me. The easiest way to do it is to just switch your x's and your y's, which is exactly how we did it in the examples. But that's what that means. So that very last part, it just says the inverse of a function can be graphed by reflecting over the line y equals x. All right, and that is the notes. Those are the notes for targets 10 and 11. If you have any extra questions, don't hesitate to ask an Algebra 2 teacher.